Who is this chick writes? Since I have jumped on the sewing and washi tape bandwagon, my lovely ribbons are getting dusty. Simple grow grain to gorgeous Webster's trims. Can you help me love them again? Glitter girl, can you help? Who is this chick? Wrap a ribbon round it? Of course I can. If you have a look at the ribbon section in the two-piece store right now, you'll find all sorts of different ribbon cards where you get a collection. This one's definitely in the store right now. These two are from some older collections, but there are similar ones for current collections that come as a little set like that that match the paper collection. And then also some big packs where you get lots and lots of spools of ribbon that will match one collection but can mix and match with all your other papers too. So they're, if you love ribbon, those are a real bargain buy because you get lots and lots of different patterns and colors uh, all in one big batch of ribbons. You'll also find lots of options for baker's twine, big spools, little spools, cards with all different colors together. So baker's twine is a big one at the moment. And then if you search for glitter tape, You'll also get this really cool glittery ribbon from American Crafts that comes in lots of different colors. So plenty of options in the two-piece store right now, and I'm going to see what we can do today to use a bunch of ribbon. After last week's more manly page, today I'm going very girly with two shades of pink. I'm using this giant pink chevron from Crate Paper's Little Bo Peep collection. And then in the Little Boy Blue collection, there's a very similar print in yellow if you wanted a, if you like the pattern but would prefer an option with um, a different color scheme, a bit less girly pink. And with both the Little Boy Blue and the Little Bo Peep collections, I'll link them underneath so you can have a look. But I found that there are a few papers that are very specifically baby, but there's quite a few that I will use without baby pictures. So I just thought I would um, share that with you in case you dismiss those collections because they were baby themed. There might still be something in there that you like because there's lots of patterns like this that aren't specifically baby in any way. The second pink paper I'm using today is from Dear Lizzie Neapolitan, and it's a really subtle pink and white watercolor wash type print. It has this bolder pink on the other side, um, but I'm going to be using the pale one. I'm using a really subtle pale color because I'm going to be putting lots of ribbon over the top, and so I don't want something with a busy pattern that's going to be hard to take in once I add all that ribbon. Okay, so one thing I want to do to the background, while, and then I'm going to set it aside and do all the ribbon work, and that is to add a little bit of ink to this background. The page itself already has a little bit of distressing and I just want to make that a little bit more obvious by using some brown Mr. Huey or any mist that you like. And I'm just going to go on the diagonal. The majority of my page is going to go right down the middle so I want to add some ink splatters that will take my eye from this top corner to the bottom corner. And the middle doesn't matter so much because I'm going to cover that with the paper and the ribbon. Now I'm just using the end of the sprayer, but you can also now find little eyedroppers that are made for the Mr. Huey bottles. So if that sort of look is something that you use often, those eyedroppers might be um, a worthwhile tool to pick up. So I'm just going to set this aside for a minute and then work on the ribbon elements. So I have one photo for today's layout because I wanted to pick something where I could show you lots of ribbon on a single page. So I have a 4x4 Instagram print and I'm going to make a column. So I'm going to go ahead and attach the photo. So that it's at the top of the column. And then I'm going to cut it so that it's equal side on equal mat on this side. And then I want it about an inch or two shorter than the 12 inch because I want to um, have this long column that's going to go down the middle of the page. So I'm going to trim this to just so that will end up if that's a, almost a quarter of an inch and that's almost a quarter of an inch. So it will end up about four and a half by 11. 
it turns out that those mats are not even uh, anywhere near a quarter of an inch, so it's more like uh, four and a quarter by 11, but it uh, just depends on how wide you want the mat. And here's how it looks in regard to that 12 by 12 page with the ink added. But I'm not adhering this column yet because I want to add ribbon elements to this empty space here. I still want to have room for my title and my journaling, so I'm going to be adding some gaps and then ribbon in the middle. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick a few different ribbons and these can be absolutely any ribbons that you want. So just look in your stash and choose a few that match your color scheme or at least complement so that you have um, you can have them all in one color or you can have a variety of shades. So I can bring in this pink because that matches the background but then I could also use a multicolor and I'm just looking at the moment for quite plain ribbons I'm going to save my fancier trims like this one for a little bit later so I have all these different flat ribbons and what I want to do is make loops so that they will meet in the middle and interlock so you can either set it up so that your ribbons are the same ribbon meeting up or you can do it like this where you have two different ribbons and you just loop them and pull it tight and then I'm going to be wrapping that around and attaching it on the back. So I think I'll just have a look to see if I like them uh, with the same ribbon on both sides of the, of the loop or if I want different ones. So you're just looping in the middle. And then pulling it tight. I think I will go with the same. Um, so if you make one set of loops, then you'll find your measurement that you need and then that makes it really easy. So you want one loop that's going to go a little bit more than the center and a little bit here so that you'll be able to tuck it under and attach. So then once you have that length you can cut in pairs all your different ribbons. So I can have this one in pink and then I can do the same measurement with my green ribbon, with my multicolored ribbon until I have plenty of pairs to go around my pattern paper in the center of the page. What you want to do is then take each of those ribbons and attach it to the back. So you figure out where that first ribbon is going to come across so that you know where to start and then you can just start adhering them in a row on the back and I've just secured it with washi tape. You can use whatever adhesive that you would like on the back and then you repeat the same on the other side and when you're looking at it from the back all the ribbons should be facing up so if it's a ribbon like this where it has a right side and a wrong side you want that pattern to be facing right side up as you tape it to the back because then we're going to fold this around and loop it on this side. So with both sides attached it looks like this and you could of course use a full length of ribbon so if you're not worried about um, that extra little bit then go ahead and run the whole length of ribbon here so you could just measure this whole piece and then um, go ahead and run it across here run another length of tape across the the top or double sided tape, anything you want to use to secure it there. Um, but quite a few times people are asking how can you get more from a, a small length of ribbon or a small amount of paper. So I just thought I would um, show how that works with um, these pieces where I don't have a huge amount of each kind of ribbon and I want to give them all a try. So I've just been able to separate that gap. Now when I turn the page over, turn this little piece over, then I'm going to take each pair and just loop it around itself so that it ends up returning to the side it was on. And then I flip this over and attach it again on the back. And that's why I've used tape in this instance rather than my rolling adhesive because then I'm going to need to attach that ribbon again. And if I'm just doing lots of layers of 
glue and ribbon and something that is going to go over the whole piece is a bit more secure so that way I can just start another strip of tape and the washi will pick up and um, come off the page easy enough that I can just do that with each ribbon as I place it but it doesn't have to be washi tape by any means because it's not going to show and in fact it's going to be a bit of a mess on the back really so w use whatever adhesive is easy for you more than um, needing it to be a certain kind so then I'm just going to repeat that with each of these pieces making the little loop and returning to the other side so that the loop is in the center and then making a big mess of my tape really and bringing it back to the other side and securing it here. So here's all my ribbon loops and at first because this is just um, a single sheet of pattern paper and it's quite small they will um, start to bend the page up a little bit. Once this is attached to the background with plenty of adhesive it will lay flat. So just keep in mind that when you're looping them you don't want it so tight that it's going to bend the paper like this. If it's curling up just a tiny bit around the edges you'll be able to fix it with glue and you can tell just by holding it down if it's going to flatten out or if the paper is not um, going flatter if it wants to tear or anything underneath those ribbons. So that's just one technique. So just making little loops, repeating it back to the, or returning it back to the other side and adhering on the back. The back will end up looking um, an absolute mess, but no one will know except you. So that's fine. And now I have this space to work with my title and my journaling. And then I want a little bit of ribbon at the bottom. And that's where I was saving my fancier pieces for. So I have this, um, this pretty dear Lizzie trim. This is from the Neapolitan collection. And so is that bright stripe pink in there too. And it's a bit like a tutu really. So I just wanted to run this at the bottom. And I'll put it the right way up. Um, I'll just put it the wrong way just so I can cut it to size. I just want enough to go from one side to the other. I don't even need to wrap it around because I'm going to adhere it directly to the paper. So with this I'm just going to run my normal adhesive right on the back and you can also use double-sided tape. But with most ribbons they're light enough that they don't take a lot of glue to adhere to your page. So if you've never tried it with just normal glue, you may be surprised. Of course you can stitch it um, so that it has a bit more of a textile effect if you want to stitch it either by hand or with your machine. I'm going to have a little bit left over there, so I'll just trim off the extra once I've got it in place. I've just got one, one piece too many because this trim is a bit stretchy so when I adhered it it started to to stretch to the other side. So I have a little loop there at the bottom but I, everything's still fitting on the 12 by 12 page so I'm just going to have a tiny little bit of space at the top and the bottom. This set also comes with some sequins so I thought they were one option to go right on top of that tutu trim like this, or a different option would be to use the ribbon tape and put that over the middle. I think the gold in this case is a better color match because I've used the brown and in, uh, in the ink and the ribbon. So I use the gold because it's a better tonal match to browns, whereas if I was using gray in the papers then I would use the silver. Now this photo is about a baby shower, but I think these particular ribbons would also be perfect if you have things like dance recital photos because it's it's very girly and, and costumey. But that might even work with any Halloween photos you'll have if you have any girly sequined Halloween costumes in your house this year. 
or in your photos from before. And then with the sequins, I'm going to do the same thing with the adhesive, just normal adhesive. But you do have to be careful with sequins because the last few are always going to start to fall off the chain. It just has to do with the way they, they're they stitched. Um, if you've worked with sequins outside of scrapbooking before, it's just a known quantity with sequins on a on a thread. So just cut a few extra than what you're going to need. And then I'm just adhering it right over the top so that I have that tinselly bit of the ribbon. Then these three little individual sequins that fell off I can mix in with my ink dots so I can just adhere them individually. And then no loss and it adds a little bit more bling without any bulk because they're just flat sequins. So I'm going to go ahead now and adhere this strip to the background so that I can start adding my title and journaling details here in the gap. For my title, I want to use two different kinds of letter stickers, some glittery thickers and some smaller micro monograms. These are from Basic Gray. And I want the bottom words to be in the smaller one, the larger letters to be the top word, and then I want it to overlap. So these glittery thickers are going to overlap the tops of these letters ever so slightly. So these need to go onto the page first, but I need to get the spacing right. So I'm just going to start with one letter sticker from my title and not from that first word in the title and not adhere it very much at all. So I've actually got the bottom of that letter up off the page and then I can start in with the smaller letter stickers and tuck them underneath just ever so slightly and then I can spell that whole section all the way across and come back in and add all my big thickers over the top and that will help get everything in the right spot for all those layers and to fit in that gap and just so these letters will touch the small pink ones ever so slightly but not end up with a huge mass of letters I have to pick up and put down. Sometimes when you want to put a title in a certain amount of space it's going to end up ever so slightly off. So what I tend to do is then find something else to balance it so that it doesn't need to be perfect. So in this case the little letters fit right inside the gap but I can't make the thickers fit ever. They're so close but not quite. So I've poked a hole, uh, pierced a hole with paper piercer and I'm just going to add a little brad there and secure that on the back. And then I can add a couple more brads elsewhere on the page perhaps and I can even add them right along in the ribbons. So I can just use my paper piercer and it's a little bit harder to find the space that you've just pierced with ribbons because of course the fabric of the ribbon will um, won't necessarily leave a big big hole like it does in the paper but it, it does work the paper piercer does work or a needle does work to um, to basically you're just putting a gap in the fibers moving the fibers of the ribbon to the sides that you can then add in your embellishment add in your brad or other sorts of embellishments can go right in here you can add beads you can add charms and um, you could put flare on top so I tend to use things in threes so now I've added two I feel like I should add a third one and there is a third one in pink so I will um, put that in a little triangle so I can put this one down at the bottom of the page And then I have three. I'm going to add my writing here and see what other little elements I might want to finish the page. To finish, I'm just going to add a few tiny little stamps from one of my favorite stamp sets um, to mix in with all the ink splatters and the various bits and pieces that move along this diagonal. Just using the same brown ink that I use on the edges of things to come in and add 
a little butterfly here and there and some words. And because I'm using a Distress ink, the stamping's going to be softer than the splatters of ink. So it's just adding a little bit of different um, of a different texture and tonal quality so that everything doesn't have to be big and bold. There can be some elements that are nice and soft. They'll still be very um, visible when you're looking at the page in person. So just a few little pieces like that. I think maybe one of those tiny little florals would be a good addition. Maybe Maybe I'll go with these little bees instead. And with these, I wanted to make sure I had some element that went off the edge of the page at both the bottom and top corners because by going off the edge, then um, it, it's a bit more obvious that the diagonal line takes you into the page and all the way off. So if everything is neatly inside the page, it looks just a tiny little bit stilted the more you look at it. And by having some element that goes off the edge in both cases, it just it feels a little bit more finished. You can add ink around the edges if you like. You can keep adding more bits and pieces here. I could put more brads, more sequins, or I could have fewer pieces than what I've added. So just depending on how many elements you want. So one technique to try here, the loops of ribbon, just looping them around and adhering them on the back. I'm layering up ribbon and sequins or glitter ribbon, other elements, and attaching a brad or another embellishment in there with your fancier trims. I also really like ribbons in groupings. These are from another project um, for Halloween, but it's just a case of um, a couple layers of ribbon doubled over with some tool netting and little pennants cut from pattern paper stapled in place or you could do messy stitching at the top and you have something ready to go in just moments. You could certainly use this on a page. You could place it up here and, and then create your page around it. Obviously it doesn't go with this, but that's okay. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that a lot of page sketches at the moment include a strip at either the top or the bottom. Usually um, that's being used with paper and with the strips that we get at the bottom of the page or the offcuts that you get by your trimmer. But anything that's a long strip on a sketch can be replaced by ribbon. So take a look at some of those pages that have paper strips at the top or the bottom and replace them with ribbon. It might be one length, long length of ribbon that goes all the way across or it might be different pieces of ribbon. So this is the project I'm showing you for today, but also go over to Two Peas if you're not there already. Check out the link to the collection of different ribbon layouts I've assembled for you so you can have plenty of ideas beyond just this one, but I hope you'll give this looped ribbon a try. That's your challenge for this week, and thanks so much for watching. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.